those dreams into one here down the stretch. All right, we'll see if that changes things for Dusty Hannes and the Razorbacks. They are a perfect 5-0 inside Bud Walton Arena, and we are ready to go here. It's Moses Kingsley versus Kenny Jones to tip it away, and we are underway as Arkansas takes the tip. Make it already with the three off the back iron and tapped out of bounds, going to Austin Feed for the Govs' first possession. And we saw Macon hit about 12 in a row before the game started, and I don't know, he may have used up too many shots early on. Arkansas bringing that full court pressure. Their brand of basketball is the fastest 40 minutes, and we have seen that so far this year. And that's what Arkansas wants to do, you know, Teams will be able to hang with them that we've seen so far, maybe for the first 30 minutes of the game. But that last 10 minutes, Arkansas keeps coming at you, and that's where they really start to expand that scoring mark. Josh Robinson pours in the floater, a game-high 33 points in Austin Peay's 103-99 loss to Fort Wayne on Wednesday. We said they can score it, and we saw that against the Dons. And Robinson is a guy they really got to keep an eye on, know where he is every time he's on the floor. When you talk about a kid that's a, just a pure score, Josh Robinson is the kid you're talking about. Certainly his preseason all OVC, the only pick of conference in the preseason for the Governors. He'll throw it up. Brick on that first three attempt. And a foul on the rebound, offensive foul. And Kenny Jones will pick that one up for his first. Razorbacks' only loss was on the road to Minnesota. They have defeated all five teams they have played here at home, including Sunbelt conference favorite UT Arlington in a real back and forth game that Arkansas had to come back and win. And UT Arlington beat Texas yep. in Austin, so that's a very good team. And you look at Arkansas' schedule, the names of the teams won't impress you, but then you look at what they're actually doing, then you say, okay, this is why Mike Anderson put the, these types of teams on the schedule. Because later in the season when selection committee time comes, you look at that resume, and if these teams continue to win, it makes you look even better. Moses Kingsley at the free throw line for two shots. He is the SEC preseason player of the year right now. Ten points, eight rebounds on average for the big men, originally from Nigeria. But maybe they're even looking for bigger numbers for him if the Razorbacks are going to get to where they want to be this year. Yeah, and he's going to have to be more of a scoring threat for them to take their team to another level. Right now, you know, through these early games in the season, he's been settling a lot for outside jump shots. But he needs to be a guy that gets his backside on the low block and demands the ball and then goes to work when he gets it. And a timeout for Manny Watkins and the Razorbacks as Arkansas forces its first turnover of the ball game, but that is what the Mike Anderson and the Razorbacks, Co Coach Anderson says with this team is that they continue to get better and better. He wants to see improvement from game to game, and this is year number six for him. He has been here for a while looking to get back to the NCAA tournament. And if Arkansas plays the brand of basketball he wants to, well, you would expect that that's going to be the end result. And I think Arkansas, they're putting all the pieces of the puzzle together to do just that. Pass inside, a little bit lazy and picked off for a moment by Austin Peay. Stay with Arkansas, though. Tapped out of bounds by Jones. The one thing you're going to see from Austin P is they're not going to back down from Arkansas because they play a similar brand of basketball that the Hogs do. So they want to run. They want to pressure you and try and score in transition. That is not quite Dustin Thomas' shot, is it? That ball is going to go back to Arkansas, though, off of Kenny Jones here on the sideline. Rather see Thomas, I think, play yeah. inside you want to see the arc. You want to see Thomas try and get closer to the basket. And he does have the ability to, to knock down the long J, but He's the type of player you need to start from inside and then work your way back. Get your confidence up. See the ball go in the hole a few times first. Well, here's Thomas going strong, and he'll get fouled hard by Chris Porter Bunton. Richard sophomore from Bowling Green, Kentucky. You didn't know these guys could actually hear us over here. He must have heard you. He took it to the cup that time. Dustin Thomas playing his first season for the Razorbacks. Richard Jr. started his college career with Colorado. And Thomas, he's the type of kid, he brings so much to this Arkansas squad because of his versatility. You know, with his size, he can go down there on the low block, but he really prefers to really face up and play on the perimeter. And he does have the ability to knock down the open J. Arkansas up by three, two minutes in. Governors quickly back the other way. 
Savage spot and shoot. Got it. That's just a big shot by Savage with Thomas all over it. And he was just calm, cool, and collected and knocked it down from deep. Savage in the OVC tournament last year, which Austin P1 is an eight seed, made 18 three-pointers. And there you see again Moses Kingsley settling for a 17-foot jump shot when you'd much rather see him attack the glass. Second turnover of the ball game for Austin P. Barford to the hole. Yes! It'll go to the line. And that's Barford's game. He loves to attack in the open floor. And I haven't seen too many players that can do what he does once he gets going. And Barford, just so good. And he, he just plays under so much control once he takes off. You always see him come down on two feet. And you talk, coaches want to teach. They, they love to teach that to their players. You know, if you're going to be down and try and attack the glass, try and come down on two feet because now you have options. You take off off one foot, you have no other option but to go up. Two feet, you can give a shot fake. You can get into the, the d defender, try and draw a foul, and do so many different things. And Barford, really good at doing that in the open floor. He is the top-ranked junior college player this year for a reason. And Robinson stuffed away by Moses Kingsley. He averages four blocks a game. That leads the SEC. And back the other way, making converts. <laughs> Alex, have we seen any team set up any kind of offense yet? <laughs> we knew this one was going to be fast and furious. These teams are just going back and forth, back and forth. And as a fan, you love to see it. As a coach, you're probably like, oh, boy, can we sustain this the entire game? Savage off the mark on his second three. Watkins running the break, slows it up. Austin P four and three this season, still looking for their first true road game of the year. They're 0 and two. Making fires away. A little strong that time, but Kingsley, offensive rebound. Beats Thomas, and now it's back out. Barford off of the fake. Finishes oh. at the net. <laughs> and that's a tough shot. He made it look easy. But remember, Barford's a right-handed player. He's going in there off two feet and switches the ball over to his weak hand, his left hand. Made it look silky smooth. Led the nation last year in junior college, averaging 26 points per game. But Austin Peay coming right back as John Murray is on the board, the senior from Indianapolis. Yeah, and Murray able to take advantage of uh, Macon being aggressive and was able to cut back door on him and get an easy lay-in. Barford tried it from outside, not this time. Robinson, the one-man break to the hole, cleaned up nicely by Murray for his second straight bucket. And that right there is what Arkansas usually does after a missed shot. Push it down your throat and get an easy layup in transition. Nice feed, Kingsley, but swatted away. Jones on the help defense that is trying to continue that legacy that has been set. But he's not actually the only pair because you got Trey Ivory as well, who we haven't seen yet in the game. But Trey Ivory's dad, Willie, played there at about the same time. Yes, and, and it's always cool when you can see father and son just playing for the same institution. Austin P throws it away. Or back the other way, Arkansas uh, did rather. Yeah. Robinson will get one more from the free throw line. He's averaging and 23 points per game. He's the ninth leading scorer in the nation. And right there, he'll get a free throw. And rarely do you see a guy that can push it back at Arkansas the way Arkansas usually pushes it at teams. But this kid right here, like we talked about, he's a flat out scorer. 23 points a game, that's, that's a lot of buckets out. <laughs> Last year's run was really sparked when he moved from the shooting guard off the ball to the point, and then Savage joined the lineup as well. That's when this team had to win its last two conference games just to make it to the conference tournament as the eighth seed. And then what did they do? Well, they won the whole thing. Went to the NCAA tournament and actually gave Kansas the one seed a run for its money. And Austin Peay kind of switching up to his own defense right now. You see Hannah's checking back in, getting a good look at it. Hannes has to be getting frustrated. Now he's 0 for his last six from three, which is not something you say very often about Dusty Hannes. Shot 43% from beyond the arc last year. And sometimes you know you want it to go in so bad, you just, you're just just thinking about the shot. Hannes, I think, just needs to go out there and let it play. It's your senior year, man. Kingsley got his second block of the game in emphatic fashion. Arkansas with a chance to take the lead. Kingsley hard to the ground. 
Watkins with the patented floater. And once again, you see Watkins just keeping things alive for Arkansas, just being in the right spot at the right time and going and getting the ball. John Murray, yes, and he will go to the free throw line. We have seen a lot of N one so far early on, and Murray, the latest recipient, he's got six. You know, and, and what Austin P is doing that I like, you know, when Arkansas, they come off that ball screen, and Arkansas is coming with that hard trap. Austin P isn't being phased by the trap. They're attacking it, and now Kingsley's back there by himself, and now Kingsley's having to make a decision. Do I go up and try and block the shot? And Austin P really, really good about trying to get into your body and finish the bucket. So we are tied up at 14 here, six minutes into this one between Austin P and Arkansas. One more free throw coming here for John Murray. Junior College All-American formerly set the school record at that point for free throws. Senior originally out of Indianapolis. And Austin P setting up in that zone again. Just trying to keep Arkansas off balance. They're pointing at Dusty Hannes and making sure they know where he is at all times. Adriel Bailey with the ball for the first time into big man Trey Thompson for the lay. So and that's new the players in now for Mike Anderson and a change of pace. And that's the way you got to attack the zone. You got to try and get it inside. And great pass there by Adriel Bailey, recognizing Trey Thompson had his man sealed down on the low box, gave him a good pass. Thompson able to finish. Governors did lose their best player last year, Chris Horton. Trey Thompson blocks that shot by John Murray. They've had to change how they play just a little bit. The rebounding has to come from somewhere now because Horton was a guy that could go out and get 20 boards in a game, and you don't have that. Dave Luce has said that they need to piecemeal it together, do it by committee. Yeah, and that's when everybody just has to go and know that Rebounding is not one or two guys' responsibility. It's a team responsibility. Everybody has responsible for getting every loose ball, crashing, diving into the bleachers if you have to, but every ball that comes off that rim, we're going for it as a team. Arkansas has not hit a three yet. They're now 0 for 6. And a foul on the rebound. That's going on. Dusty Hannes is first. And they, they got Hannes on that one, and I don't know what he actually did. But must have pushed the, got to push in the back on the rebound. Boston P setting up its half court offense. We have not seen a lot of half court offense from either team so far. Is that a tie up? Yes it is. Savage was going through. Anton Beer got his hands in there. Possession arrow will keep it with the Governors. Backcourt violation saved by Murray. Jope comes out for the screen. Savage, fire away. Now one for three from beyond the arc. Hit his first, missed his last two. And it steps into it on the blow by. Finished by oh. Cook. Oh, came in from nowhere to put that one in for two. Hey, just great job by Orlando Cook. Recognizing Hannes, Miss Long, going on the backside, cleaning up off the glass. Razorbacks backs by three. Murray finds some space, tapped away. And they're gonna say it's staying with Austin P. The deflection out of bounds. And it will bring us to a timeout on the floor. Fast-paced game so far. Razorbacks lead it by three here as the Governors giving the Razorbacks all that they can handle here in Fayetteville tonight. As you know, he's just a teacher, and he loves to teach. And that's that's what basketball ultimately coaching is ultimately all about. It's about just teaching young men, young women, whoever's out there playing, how to get better, how to execute, how to be disciplined, and Definitely a great teacher. His granddaughter Ryan right now dealing with her second bout of cancer. She's only six years old, but has been dealing with cancer for quite some time. Actually just had a brain tumor removed in New York three days ago. So our best wishes certainly to Dave and 
to Ryan as well. Ryan is the daughter of Brad Luce, who's actually an assistant on the basketball staff over at Missouri. So there's, there's coaching connections, connections everywhere. Yeah. And you know, as a parent myself, it's always difficult when you see your child or your grandchild hurt and in pain. So definitely our prayers are, are, are with him and his family as, as he's dealing with it and also for his granddaughter as she's dealing with this battle. Right now, Dave Luce is trying to win a basketball game. His team's only down by three here to Arkansas. Beard on the drive and floater. It sits in the rim, just on the side. It's wedged in there, and of course, that's going to go to the possession arrow, and Arkansas will get a fresh 30 on the shot clock. If you're just joining us, it has been really back and forth so far. Arkansas did lead by as much as seven, just about three and a half minutes in. Largest lead for Austin P was when that first bucket was scored, and they led by two. Hannah's missed. Bailey with the cleanup. And, and you just see Hannes is just trying to will himself to a basket. And I mean, he's working so hard. And we talked about it earlier, we saw him, them setting up some plays and trying to get Hannes coming off some screens, but we haven't seen that yet. So hopefully for Hannes, we can see him maybe try and get some clean looks at the basket. Right now, he's having to work extremely hard to get some points. Tough floater missed by Kenny Jones. Anton Beard running the show for Arkansas. With a foul on the floor. Ten and a half left, Arkansas about to inbound once again. Here's our first look at Drake Halo Clayton. A redshirt junior, he's from Orlando, started his career with USF, the University of South Florida, after he ruptured his Achilles senior year. Nice that Orlando Antigua still took him, but decided to transfer, played a year at USF, then went to Northwest Mississippi Junior College. And now he is here with Austin P. Nice look to Bailey for the slam. Anton Beard orchestrating the offense. Yeah, and Adriel Bailey really doing a good job out there for the Arkansas Razorbacks, the freshman. Getting some playing time and making the best use of it. Adriel Bailey has three made field goals in his Arkansas career so far. Is it any surprise that two of them are dunks? And <laughs> we know this kid, he's a high flyer. And, and he, he just flew pretty high <laughs> over, the, over the seats. And just a good job by Beard recognizing Bailey Flashing on the low block and Bailey taking care of business, putting it down. That's how you finish a play, Alex. No doubts there. Cook's going to get called for that contact, nine on the timer. A lot of people around the Arkansas program kind of compare him to a guy like Michael Qualls, also out of Louisiana. Adriel Bailey, though, he possesses that athleticism that is is rare. It doesn't come with, with everybody, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, a lot of guys, they work really hard to have that leaping ability. And some guys, they can just roll out of bed, not even stretch, <laughs> no icy hot or anything, and go out there and throw it down. And Bailey's one of those types of guys. Sounds like you in your playing days. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, had to, I had to have the heat and pack, the icy hot, <laughs> everything just to get loose. Robinson shot glances off the rim. Beard in transition, misses on the three. Cook's really battling on the boards here tonight. But the thing you see about this lineup that Mike Anderson has in, these guys are attacking the offensive glass and putting in work. And if they continue to play like that, you can you may see some lineup changes with these guys in the starting lineup at some point. Savage trying to settle the run, missed in the tip in. That's gonna be a goal 10. Barford is going to come back in, but your point, Simeon, the Razorbacks are out rebounding the governor 17 to 5 and 10 to 1 right now on the offensive glass. In Arkansas, they're just doing a great job of just going to get the ball. And that, that's sometimes all it takes is you just got to have a will to go get the ball. You know, one of the best rebounders that everybody knows about is Dennis Rodman. And he all he did was he just went and got the ball. He just had a will to go get the ball. And that's what made him such a good rebounder. 10-0 run for Arkansas in the last five minutes. Austin P back into the zone here, Sim. 
and Austin P. You know, it's been successful for them the, the few times that they've been in it. Forced Arkansas to take some tough one, but Barford just not able to finish that one. An easy layup miss. Austin P. Trying to quell this run. Stem the tide a little bit. Knocked out of Savage's hands. And Robinson picks it up in the backcourt. Straight ahead to Choke, and he puts it in for two. And that's a great play, and that's what a, you, you teach your players to do. Dribble with your head up. Make sure you can see every player on the floor. And that kid right there did what he's taught to do. Dribble with your head up, find open man, easy layup. Hannah's finally got one to go from three. It had been two games consecutively without a three-pointer for Dusty Hannes. You have to go all the way back to February 13th last year that he didn't have a three in consecutive games, but he's got one here tonight. And you can see Hannes just breathe a sigh of relief, wondering, when am I ever going to hit another shot? And just good to see that one go down for, for the young fella. Figure he's too good a shooter for that to last too long, right? And, you know, he's going he's gonna to see that kind of – this kind of defense on him all year long. He's not gonna get very many open looks. Three on two, Hannah's going to work on the glass with the left hand. Arkansas leads by 12, its largest lead of the game. But the thing you and I have talked about before, Hannah's is so much more than just a three-point shooter. Like that right there, there aren't a lot of guys that can go in and switch over to your left hand, look for the contact, and finish strong in transition. And Hannes has the ability to do that. We need to see more of that from him. Galata on the ground. Does keep it. Does it lead to a transition bucket? A foul is called as Clayton was going in trying to score the basketball. And Razorbacks by 12 here, and Dusty Hannes, a big reason he's starting to break out. And good job by Hannes, just getting his feet squared up and knocking it down. Once again, going in the fast break, Hannes, silky smooth with the left hand. To see this team get better and better as his games go on, and would you say that that's happened so far? Yeah, definitely, and that's what you want. You want your, your teams to continue to improve on the areas that they, they have uh, not done well in, and that's what Arkansas is focused on. You see what they're doing on the glass tonight. I mean, that's where they're doing all their damage. Ten offensive rebounds, you look at their points in the paint. It's coming off of getting offensive rebounds. You look at your second chance points, you got 13 of them. That's coming from your offensive rebounds. So if that's what it's going to take, you better crash the board every single time, and that's what we talked about earlier. Razorback certainly doing a good job of that. On top by 11 with the basketball. Austin P back in this zone and to CJ Jones for three. He was two and two from deep last game. Got and one already. If Arkansas keeps hitting it like that. <laughs> Austin P won't be in that zone much longer. They this year have the shooters to, to take teams out of zones, don't they? Yeah, they do. And it's just a matter of just being, continuing to be patient and shooting the ball with confidence. I mean, these guys shoot so many shots every single day. And you talked about how easy it looks. Well, it's because, I mean, that's the amount of shots you're putting up. It should come easy. Hugs on the run again. How about another? Why not? C.J. Jones. And I told you, that kid right there has an extremely bright future. If he, we can see this kid continue to develop and, and, and be a star here for these Arkansas Razorbacks. I'm surprised to see Arkansas pull out the full court press. Robinson has been very quiet so far, just four points for the Governors. Only have 18 as a team. That ball taken out of the hands of Murray, but a foul call. And, and they're calling, calling Jones for that one. Said he got a little arm on the, on the drive. I'll say that Murray was in the act of shooting. But Jones just showing you that athleticism. Austin P doing a good job, though. Whenever they're able to get into the paint area, Arkansas puts themselves in a bind. Arkansas has to do a much better job of keeping the governors out of the lane. Check that. The foul was on the floor as Austin P inbounds. Robinson working around the zone, and he scores it. 
And once again, it puts Moses Kingsley in such a bind when you allow your guy to drive by you. Because now Kingsley's like, okay, he's a shot blocker. His instinct is to go up there and get the get the block. But in that situation, you're also putting yourself out there to pick up a dumb foul. Now 90 feet from the basket as well. Dustin Thomas picks it up. So that will put Austin P in the bonus. One and one. Upcoming year for Kenny Jones, just 59.4% from the charity stripe. So maybe this is the right guy to have at the line. And it's interesting. I, I've seen several teams do what Austin P just did. They don't put anybody in the in the free throw uh, lane when a teammate shooting the free throw. But I don't know if it's that's what they do or if they just knew who was at the free throw line. They just decided to get back. Well, for the Razorbacks, he just got an easy bucket from making the lead is 17 once again. Clayton, 10 to shoot. Tough move. And missed with close range jumper. Thomas, offensive foul, didn't get a travel before that happened though. So travel, it was so, going back yeah. anyway to Austin P. But you'd much rather get, pick up that travel than pick up a, a, a careless foul right there. So, Especially good. that would have been Thomas's second. A good job by the ref being on top of that. Good officiating crew tonight. Anthony Jordan, our crew chief, John Hampton, Rob Rourke. On side, there's Anthony Jordan. You know, and, and those guys, they, they, <laughs> they catch so much heat. When they do something right, we should give them their props. <laughs> Without question. It's not the easiest job, I can <laughs> no. imagine. So Austin P trying to cut into this Arkansas lead. It's 17 right now before halftime. And right now, P just needs to be solid on the offensive end. But Arkansas just scoring too many easy buckets right at the basket. Clayton on the ground, but it comes down to Barford. Watkins. Oh. And a tie up on the rebound between Savage and Macon. It's going back to Austin P. And Macon was calling for the lob on that play, and Watkins didn't. He either didn't see him or wanted to go score himself. <laughs> that would have been a tough lob to execute. Watkins was like, listen, I'm the senior. I'm getting this shot. <laughs> Paid my dues. So uh, trying the trap, but it's broken by Austin P. Governors, according to Dave Luce, have to develop a defensive conscience. That'll go in one more coming up. Here for Austin P. Lead cut to 15. And and but but if they keep giving up this many points, like they gave up 103 points to Fort Wayne at home on Wednesday, you can't yeah. consistently win basketball games like that, can you? No, you can't. And I can see what 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 coach is talking about when he's saying that about it developing that type of conscience because Arkansas is scoring too many points in the paint and it's because they're able to drive by their guy too easily and there's no real help side once they get in there so thrown right into the hands of Savage Razorbacks incredibly adept at forcing turnovers this season Soft floater, doesn't have the soft touch that time for Jones. Here's Macon to load and release. That's off the mark. <laughs> like we talked about, Macon used all his threes up in the pregame warm up. Arkansas is three for 11 and Macon is nothing for three from beyond the arc. Skip over to Murray. <coughs> Threes really aren't falling for Austin P either, though. They're just one of five now. I tell you what, we knew this game would be fast, but neither of these teams are shy about putting up shots. <laughs> Transition is the word of the night. Savage had it knocked out of his hands. No call. Third time's a charm. No, but fourth. How about the tipping by Jones staying with the play? Yeah, and good job by Jones just being relentless on the glass and sticking with the play. Able to get an easy tip in. And now Mike Anderson wants timeout as the Razorbacks are one for their last five. Out finish. 
he can get his points very quickly too. So sometimes it can be deceiving. Might not look like he's doing much, but he's helping out the team. And you know what, with Jalen Barford, the thing we saw tonight that maybe we haven't seen is that offensive aggressiveness from the tip. Yep, and that's one of the things that Arkansas is gonna need from him, especially when they get into conference play. They need as many people out there that are offensive minded and can actually put the ball in the hole. Just a beautifully executed high low from Kingsley to Thomas that time. How about that pass right around Macon's back by Robinson. A thousand point score. Is at 24 straight games in double figures. He's got seven early on. Murray holds and hangs. Uh, Murray's got eight. Looks like that 11 for the leading score for the Governors in this game. You'll see the Governors trying to make some sort of run, get in single digits. Beard. And off of Savage. In Austin Pete, just and just by watching right there, they, they really don't block out very well. They they allow Arkansas to just crash the boards without putting a body on somebody. Hey, if somebody's gonna go in for an offensive rebound, they're gonna have to jump over my back to get it. Beard gets the offensive rebound for Arkansas. That is number 11 to five for the Governors. Kingsley looking for it against the smaller Kenny Jones. Going to work, big man throw it down. <laughs> <laughs> and Kingsley's frustrated. That was a frustration dunk right there. And you could see him out there. He said, give me the ball. I think he's just tired of it. He's working his tail off on the low block. You got to get the big man the ball. And you see what he can do with it when he gets it. He's only got good. four points. And last year he averaged 16, only 10 this season. Hey, I'm telling you, Kingsley's frustrated. He wants the ball. <laughs> get the big man the ball when he calls for the ball. <laughs> Look and what he can do with him. That was emphatic. And that's what you like to see out of him. Give him the ball. Statement dunk. That was a statement. I, I, we want to see more of that out of Mr. Moses Kingsley. It is 15 now for Kingsley's Razorbacks. Moses Kingsley has impacted the game in every way that you can imagine. Averaging 3.3 blocks per game up there in the SEC. He's the SEC preseason player of the year for a reason. The numbers might be a little bit down, but he is still having such an impact for Arkansas. And that's just the respect that the coaches around the league that they have for this kid. They know what he brings to the table and what he's able to do if he has the opportunity to do it. Inside a minute to go in the second. Kingsley threw it away. And see right there, Kingsley has to be continue to be aggressive and say, hey, I gotta go try and put this ball in the hole. Right there, you know, trying to be a little bit too unselfish. Robinson. But he's not on the floor to be a passer, I can tell you that. This is the Razorbacks offense right here. How about Savage taking away that Hannah's lay-in. And Murray for three, got it to go. 10 point game here in Fayetteville. And Austin P says, hey man, we're not going away. Murray had 25 last time out for the Governors. He's already got 16. Arkansas holding for the final shot of the first half. Kingsley traveled ah. with it. 1.7 seconds left here for Austin P. Yeah. And, and the way Arkansas is running their offense, I don't understand why Kingsley, they have Kingsley as the guy that continues to get stuck up top for the high-low action. They needed to have Thomas up top looking for Kingsley down low on the low block for the high-low action. At the buzzer, Murray, way off the mark. Yes, but on. Razorbacks have the first possession here of the second half as we are back underway in Bud Walton Arena. Racerbacks by 10. You see several possessions uh, late in the first half. Austin P was in that zone, but they're coming out, opening the second half, and man to man, and Arkansas recognizing it and going right down to Moses Kingsley, getting him isolated on the block. Need to see more of that for Kingsley. I'm sure he, he would like to get the ball more isolation opportunities on the block as well. 
And if you're just joining us, Arkansas was up by as much as 17 with six minutes to go in the first half. But Austin P finished on a 5-0 run. Went into the break only down 10. Macon from the corner as it sits in. And you see Austin P right there, they switched into his zone. So it's kind of like they, they're like Coach was saying, we, we got to figure out our defensive identity. So still trying to figure it out. And right now they're giving up a lot of points while they're doing it. Lefty lay-in goes off the glass for Kenny Jones. Just his second basket of the game, lead back to 10. Thomas decides to spot up and shoot. That was pretty. And that's what he does. He has that ability. That's why, when I said earlier, swatted away by Savage after the turnover. It's going to stay with Arkansas, though. So Razorbacks do get a possession out of it. Yeah. Like I was saying, like I said earlier, you you, you like to see Thomas be in more high-low situations with him at the top and Kingsley at the bottom. But we haven't seen that much so far here tonight. At the free throw line, Thomas again. And that's what you want to see. Thomas being the one that's flashing to the high post area, catching that ball, able to face up and knock down that 15-foot jumper. Offensive foul. Thomas draws it this time. He has been all over the court for Arkansas. And isn't it interesting how much more you're willing to take a charge if you just knock down two jump shots? <laughs> so Thomas just sticking in there and taking it on the chin for his team. Thomas, the transfer from Colorado, expected to impact this team a lot as the season goes on, and he's making it early on, too. They'll feed the big man Kingsley. He gets doubled. Now Barford for three. And nice kick out by Kingsley, but the play started by getting your big fella the ball on the low block. Guess what? Austin P was forced to double team. Kingsley recognized it, kicked it out to Barford, drills the three. Austin P finishes the first half on a 5-0 run. Now Arkansas showing you Anderson, how they do it. Uh, can't be too upset at seeing those kinds of looks. Those are high percentage shots that the Razorbacks easily convert. And Arkansas now on a 7-0 run, leading it by 17 once again. Jones on the turn, working on Thomas, not finding a lot of space, but he spins it through. And great job just keeping his pivot foot and just working, working, working until he was able to find an opening and scooped it up with his left hand. Arkansas sets up the half-court offense with Macon here. Kingsley to a cutting Thomas. Missed the finger roll. But that's what you want to see. We talked about it. Thomas at the high, Kingsley down on the low block. Up to that time by Murray. Man, he had to lean in and get through everybody to score it. He's got 18 first bucket of the second half for the game's leading scorer. Now Austin P just needs stops, but I mean that's not their forte. It's going to go to line. It's going to be hard to win a lot of ball games if you don't know how to play defense. Man. No matter how many points you can score. How do you instill that on a team if you're if you're Dave Luce? And I, I think it just comes down to just demanding it. I mean, you play the way you practice. If you don't demand guys play defense and get stops and practice, then it's going to show they're on the basketball floor. Not saying that's what he's doing, but that's that that's the truth of the matter. The facts of the matter is you're going to play the way you practice. A lot of times. You want to get a team to play defense, you start putting price tags on things that they don't do. You don't get this many stops, you allow this, this will happen to you after the game. Woo. Things like that. Kenny Jones denied. Barford able to pick it up on the baseline, though. Kingsley finds Watkins. And they're going to call another whistle, a turnover on the Razorbacks. No, a foul, actually. Kingsley's yeah. going to pick up a foul, offensive foul on the big man for Arkansas. And Kingsley's actually a really good passer. For a big man, you'd say he's, he's very, very good. Yeah, and he just got a little bit too deep, and I think Austin P did a little acting job on that one as well. Drake, Halo Clayton off the mark. Aye. So on 
and the second chance for Murray. Barford hanging and hitting. He stayed above everybody to put it in. And he's so good about going up with his right and switching it off to his left. Really good body control by Jalen Barford. He's got 12. Touch foul on the Robinson drive. Barford picks up his second. Lead once again, 17 here for the Razorbacks. It's been pretty much comfortable all game long. Austin P led after the first bucket. They did have a one point lead early on as well, but since then it's been all Arkansas. Jones skies and missed the finger roll lay in. Bacon in transition. <laughs> <laughs> making, you know, playing above the rim on that one. Robinson, oh, oh try to get it to Jones just a little too high. Thank and you. now we're off to the races. That's how you do it. And Macon's actually down at half court. And not sure what happened to him on that play, but Kingsley able to flush one in. Trainer Dave England out to check on Macon. Taking away just a little bit from that flush by Kingsley, but my goodness, that's how you run the fast break with the alley-oop. Okay. Daryl Macon has always wanted to play for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Junior college transfer. He's originally from Little Rock. Macon decided to go to Holmes Community College in Mississippi. And uh, thankfully for him, found his way to Arkansas, and maybe for Mike Anderson too, because He's ranked the number three junior college transfer in the country <laughs> behind the top Juco guy and Jalen Barford, his teammate now in Arkansas. Yeah. Sure that the Razorbacks are happy so, to have Macon. You know what Macon, his whole game plan was, listen, I know Kingsley's about to get a dunk himself, but I don't want anybody to worry about Kingsley's dunk. <laughs> <laughs> so let me roll my ankle here really fast. But Kingsley actually had a not pretty nice throw down before that uh, uh, timeout right there as well. So Murray off the mark. We've seen some highlight reel dunks yeah, so far. Yeah, Arkansas putting on a show here for the crowd. And the thing about that was that, you know, Jones almost throws down an alley-oop. It's a little too high, and then Arkansas goes back the other way almost to show him that's how it's done. Oh, goodness. <laughs> if Moses Kingsley's hitting threes, everything's going right for you, and Arkansas is up 61 to 37. And Kingsley's like, man, I'm going to show you I can't hit a, hit a jump shot from beyond 17. But Kingsley's at nine points now. Yeah, I don't think that's the offense you want to continue relying on if you're Arkansas. Kingsley draining threes. Clayton swatted away by Barford. Now Jones on the drive. Whistle on the floor. And Kingsley's so athletic. He gets off the ground so fast. Anton Beer is going to come in for Barford. Trey Thompson in. Now for Kingsley. He'll take a seat. Try to get Trey Thompson some minutes here. Could be crucial for the Razorbacks off of the bench as we head to the end of the non conference as well as SEC season. That's when it all starts SEC play. You know, you want to take care of business here in the non conference, but everything matters when SEC play starts. And that's where you really got to set the tone, set the tempo of who you are and who you're going to be. You know, it actually begins at the end of December. You yeah. really have to wait very long. Arkansas welcome, welcomes in Florida here to Bud Walton Arena around Christmas time uh, to start things off. No, you don't. And if you're fans, you love it. If you're players, you don't because that means your Christmas break at home is even shorter. The 29th, Arkansas will have a little bit of a break. They'll play Sam Houston State in Little Rock on the 22nd, and then a week later is when the fun begins. Quite the way to ease into the SEC <laughs> slate. Yeah. You got the Gators in town. Gators, man. Mike White's got that team rolling. Hannish just looks so out of sync here tonight, trying to force a lot of tough drives to the basket. It was late, shot clock, but it doesn't matter for Anton Beard. Who's first points of the game? Robinson can't answer. This is not what Austin P has done well. They're two at 10 from three. And Arkansas actually lucky on that possession because Austin P 
wide open. Robinson didn't have a hand in his face for about three seconds. Hannes, why not? Arkansas unconscious from three now. It was a rough start for them, but they're now 7-16, good for 40 coming up this week. That shouldn't be the easiest test, certainly a bigger name at least coming in than you know, a team like Austin P or, or Fort Wayne or UT Arlington, even though those are very good clubs. Clayton, high low, Jones stripped away. Arkansas gets it to Hannes. And the floater in the lane sits off off the rim. Well now, Razorbacks are on a 19-0 run. And it's not just a 19-0 run, it's a 19-0 run in the last four plus minutes. Dave Luce talked about it with us this morning. Points pile up for this Arkansas team so quickly because of the way that they play. Yeah, and they, they <laughs> you turn the ball over, you shoot a bad shot, they're gonna convert that in, uh, into easy buckets extremely fast. And that's the way Mike Anderson wants his team to play. You know, if they can score an easy bucket and transition to layup, it just takes so much pressure off the team to have to really get down there and set up a half-court offense and try and make something happen that way. Tough shot sits off of the rim for John Murray. And Arkansas make it 21 nothing. That's Ooh. what they do. How about the spin a rubber for Anton Beard? Yeah, nifty move by Baird. Ability to spin off his opponent, get it to his left, switch it back to over to the right, and he just kissed it off the glass just right. This is Arkansas's largest lead of the game. It's 34. Finally, Kenny Jones silences the crowd for a moment. But just for a moment, Adriel Bailey to the hole. And Austin P just not doing a good job in their half court offense, their uh, half court defense, defensive transition. Arkansas is just doing a good job and scoring at will right now. Baseline slither for Jones. Right back to Murray. That's a nice move in the paint. Contested, too. He's up to 20 points. Yeah, and only his second basket here for the half. Not quite time to take the clock down, but. Arkansas ends up bringing it within about 10 seconds. Hannes on the curl. It swirls out. Bailey offensive rebound. Loses it and puts it in. Bailey just so strong and really has a knack for getting the ball. Like the rim. Far a career high. Eight points now for Bailey. His previous eye was two. He'd only made one bucket. It was a dunk coming into this game. Gotta love the maturation of these younger players and junior college transfers here tonight. Hannes for three. That's the money spot for Hannes tonight. And he's knocked down two of them from the same spot this half. He's three of five after going 0 for six in the last few games. Missed his first, then hit one, and it's really uh, raining. Since then, you know, and sometimes that's what it takes, man. You just need to see one of them go down just to get your confidence back. Anyway. More numbers, three on two. Oh, Thompson on the back run. And great job by Anton Baird. He was looking at Hannah the entire way, and Austin P just fell for it. And he caught Thompson slipping in back door, and the big fella getting up for the throwdown. Austin P. Just unraveling here in front of our very eyes as Arkansas is pouring. This is going to be a great three-point shooting game for Arkansas. 0 for their first six. Simeon, since then, they're 8 for their last 11. And everybody's getting involved. Barford there getting the inside out kick out. And Moses Kingsley's like, you think I can't shoot? I'll, I'll pull up a three. You let me leave me open. I'll show you what I can do. Bear just doing a good job. And, of course, Hannah's sealing the deal and finishing it off for the Hogs. Dusty Hannes finally getting back in the flow of things. Three for five from deep, what we expected. And that didn't even include C.J. Jones, good on both of his attempts from three. Robinson not this time. 
Jones deflected away by Thompson. And Austin P will reset the offense. So the end of this game here for Austin P. I mean, look, they're down by 39. It's gonna be very tough to come back and win. Is this is this kind of learning time for Dave Luce's bunch? If I'm Dave Luce, I'm saying, listen, we gotta play better defense, and you better these next nine minutes, we better put set some kind of goal in mind that we're gonna try and limit Arkansas to over the next nine minutes, whether that be uh, uh, eliminating any opportunities in the paint or cutting them down to a certain uh, score in these next 10 minutes. But you gotta you gotta put some kind of mark out there for your team to reach for in order to, to get something out of this game. Because at this point, Arkansas clearly is gonna walk away or run away <laughs> with a W, but you still wanna learn, you still wanna use this game as a learning experience for your squad. Arkansas's got a few new players into the game. C.J. Jones checks in again, and Bracken Hazen coming in for the first time. Freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana, has appeared in four games of the six this year. Beard got contact. Bailey almost threw it down from the moon, and uh, one more foul here called tonight. But right there, you know, even though the play's dead, but it just goes to show you what Mike Anderson has told Adriel Bailey your role is for this team this year. Anyone attacks the glass, any shot goes up, you go and get it if it's a missed shot. And if the kid does that this freshman year, he's gonna have some opportunities to get a lot of playing time. You always love that kid that's just a dog on the floor, that's willing to do whatever, willing to go get the loose balls. That Manny, Manny type attitude that we see Manny Watkins has. Just with a bigger and maybe more athletic frame. With a, a lot more athletic <laughs> frame. <laughs> we saw Manny trying to dunk here and shoot around, and he was struggling a little bit to get it up over the rip. But yeah, but he does pretty much everything well other than that. Yeah, he's a great guy. That glue player for Mike Anderson. Oh, come on now. Oh, Bracken Hazen almost <laughs> threw it down. <laughs> a big time lob from Anton Beard. And Beard almost threw that one from half court, and Hazen was pointing up. See him have this big smile on his face running down the floor. Having some fun here inside Bud Walton Arena with eight minutes to go hey. and up by 41. It's that ESPN top 10 <laughs> play time right now <laughs> now. <laughs> Whistle on the floor. We will take it as well. All Arkansas. Here as we go. You got one playing at UCLA, another one in high school that just dropped 72, but big time upset uh, with UCLA knocking off number one Kentucky Wildcats. You know, South Carolina playing really well here at the uh, end of this season, or rather, end of the non-conference season. Only SEC team that's still undefeated. Defeated. Remember Frank Martin's team? Well, we've won their first 18 games last year, yeah. and then they did not make the NCAA tournament. So it's not the be-all, end-all in terms of success. Yeah, and I know they're probably playing with a little bit of, the, of a chip on their shoulder because of that. And, you know, the SEC continuing is trying to get better and better and gain respect around the country and with Kentucky and South Carolina and Florida you know three three teams getting getting votes in the top 25 poll and hopefully Arkansas who another team that's receiving votes can creep in there and get some respect from voters around the nation Jones can't answer the John Murray three trying to keep his team in as much of this game as he can he's got 23 points by far the game high score as well you know, with that uh, Gamecocks team, though, maybe the difference this year as opposed to last season is that they've got much better wins. Talked about taking down Syracuse on a neutral floor at the Barclays Center, beating Michigan at home. Remember, they beat Monmouth at home as well, and Monmouth was one of the first teams out along with South yep. Carolina last year in a one seed in the NIT. Yeah, and all that comes into play so much when you talk about resume builders. What's that resume gonna look like? Yeah, you got some teams, they may be winning every single game right now, but who are they playing against? Teams with 300 plus RPIs, and that's not gonna do them any good uh, when it comes down to postseason play. So South Carolina doing an excellent job of creating a great resume and not leaving it to chance when, when it comes down to making a decision whether or not they're gonna get into the tournament at the end of the year. Chris Porter Button fouls hard. Cook went in there to try to block the shot. You know, and that's... Fear yep. just going in, getting a little bit of the hand. But in talking about just scheduling and how that all works, you just, you just never know. You know, you, you want to put together a schedule that's going to be competitive, where, you, where your guys are going to be able to compete. And you want to win games. But sometimes, some coaches, they do it to a fault, and it comes back to haunt them. 
they put a schedule together. Yeah, they finish off 13 and 0, 14 and 0, whatever it may be. But the committee looks at that and be like, well, these these wins aren't quality wins, and we're not going to reward you for playing against lower tier teams. You know, to your point about scheduling. Arkansas brought in Stephen F. Austin last game on Thursday. They won 78-62, and really, the Jacks weren't much of a threat to the Razorbacks the entire game. But remember, this is this is a team that has won the Southland Conference the last four years. So you don't know that it's necessarily going to be a down year. You don't know that Brad Underwood is going to leave to go to Oklahoma State. Yeah. There are all these different factors that when, I mean, you're scheduling these games years in advance. Yeah. And I was listening to Mike Anderson earlier this week, and he just talked about it. But the types of teams that he, he scheduled, they aren't going to be the teams where they're going to fall off come conference play. He knew exactly what he was doing when he scheduled these guys. And he knows these are teams that perennially are good teams, and they get lots of wins in their conference. And that all comes into play when your RPI is looked at. So good job, I think, by Arkansas in their schedule. Like he said, you know, you look at it, you don't see a lot of teams that you may recognize by their name, but we know how good these teams actually are. I mean, Dave Luce had an NCAA tournament team in Austin P last season when they ran through as the eighth seed. They ran through the OVC tournament in order to win that, but this is a guy that has been at the school for 27 years. He is not only the dean of Austin P, he's the dean of the Ohio Valley Conference. So, of course, you're going to think that he's going to bring a good team in here. Maybe this wasn't the best showing by the governors, but don't be surprised if they finish towards the top of their league. Again. Yeah, and, and, and that's what these, these teams do, and that's why they play the types of teams like Arkansas, so they can get battle tested and get prepared for their conference play because they know their leagues – their season really starts once conference play starts for them. And they're not going to see anything new that they haven't seen early on in their seasons. I mean, they're playing teams like Arkansas. There's nothing they're going to face in their conference that's going to scare them. So they should be prepared and be ready to go out there and make another run at it late Three in their season. Joke right there. And Bailey with a travel. Mike Anderson not, <laughs> not too thrilled, and he never stops coaching, even with his team up by 34. <laughs> That's one of those where you're just like, Coach, what? I mean, I, I just was trying to, trying, to, trying to drive to the hole. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't mean to walk. <laughs> it was not my intention. <laughs> that I was not you. what I planned to do, Coach. We, you know, earlier in, in shoot-around today, he was kidding around with Trey Thompson, <laughs> asking him, Trey, is that how you post up? <laughs> They were like, yeah, go, this is how I post up. So, yeah, certainly a lighter moment in shoot around. Yeah, and that's good, good to see. You I mean, you I mean you you work these kids so hard every day, and, and sometimes you forget that <laughs> that I mean they're just kids. They're 18, 19 year olds. They're very talented kids. Yeah. Though. Adriel Bailey's in double figures for the first time in his racerback career. He hasn't missed from the floor yet. How about that? Stat line right there, six for six. Joe Bailey. Tough finish for Jope. Starting to come alive at the end of the game. It's probably too little too late, but he's got the last two governor's buckets. Jope, an interesting story. He's originally from Senegal, but he went to high school in Japan because there really aren't too many opportunities to play high-level basketball in Senegal. And he comes over to Cloud County Community College because, you know, he's playing as a five. I mean, he's a six-eight guy playing high school basketball in Japan. He's a foot taller than everybody else. <laughs> so he didn't really have anywhere to go where he could, uh, you know, maybe develop more as, as a three or a four. And luckily, he latches on to Austin P and Dave Luce's club. And you know what? All that's interesting, but the more I look and read about him, What's even more interesting about the kid is he speaks several languages, man. The kid speaks pretty four <laughs> languages. He speaks English, French, Japanese, and Mande, which is a language spoken uh, in Western Africa and Senegal, where he's from. Man, some days I struggle speaking English, but <laughs> for him to, to be able to master four languages, that is extremely impressive. I took Spanish for seven years in between high school and uh, college. Let me hear something. I am not even close to, <laughs> to fluent. <laughs> Yo no comprendo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 90 to 57 Arkansas now. 
and Arkansas definitely not a team you want to just run and gun and change baskets with. And it's going to come back to haunt you. And Austin P is thinking right now, oh boy, maybe we didn't have the right game plan coming in here tonight. Good to see the scoring numbers up for Moses Kingsley. He's at 13 right now, six rebounds, as well. four assists too. Kind of doing it all, stuffing the stat sheet. Yeah, and good to see Arkansas actually trying, you know, get him the ball down on the low block in some, some isolation situations. Oh, is he going to do it again? He's already got one three. Nope, a great look into Bailey. Yeah. Making five assists for the big man. He thought about it, but Coach Anderson was right behind, standing right behind him, probably yelling at Boy, if you shoot that three, I will pull you out of this game so fast. <laughs> one time is enough. Like, you got lucky and hit one. You want to shoot another one. High rebound down to Kingsley. Offensive foul this time on Kingsley. Three minutes to go. Moses Kingsley not only getting it done in the score sheet, but he has been dishing with the best of them here tonight. And Kingsley. Teach players to play hard on defense to play team defense and then the type of D that Mike Anderson wants rather than teach the offensive side of the game. Oh man, some guys, you you cannot just, you can't make them a scorer. You either know how to put the ball in the hole or you don't. <laughs> and can you make a, them a defender? Yeah, and, but you can make them play hard and play with effort. And effort and playing hard, and that, that has more of an impact on the defensive end than it does on the offensive end. You know, yeah, you can run hard and set a screen and do different things like that, but you still got to be able to have a nice shot, nice touch, and different things to put the ball in the hole. Defense is all about effort. It's about all about toughness, being in the right position. Hazen with the tip in. He wanted to join the party, and he does. Now, every Razorback that has played has scored. And I believe, yes, every healthy Razorback has played. Except, uh, except the walk-on, that's about it. And maybe we'll hear the crowd start a chant down the stretch for the young fellow. I don't believe Jonathan Holmes has played yet this season as C.J. Jones has another three. He's now three, with three of three from three, no, three of four. He did miss one a little bit earlier. The only question left is Jonathan Holmes going to get in this game. I don't see how he does it. And that's when that's where you, you start to rely on the student section, man. Student section needs to start a chat. Jonathan Holmes. I don't know if it would sound like that, but <laughs> you know, come on, try and get the young fella in the game. You gonna do that again for us? Jonathan Holmes. Thank you very much. That's great. So one more bucket. Honestly, one more free throw is going to get Arkansas to the century mark. I think I might hear something here. There, there you go. We won back. We won back. We won back. <laughs> they're pleading. They're pleading for something. I don't know who they're yelling for. They're saying we want somebody. Jonathan Holmes would be the guy. Everyone else, RJ Glasper is uh, not healthy right now. There we, go. Here we go. Yeah, Jonathan Holmes coming baby. into the game. Yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. This is right here. This is what college That's basketball what is all about. about. Now, all about. Now look, buddy, you better let it go. Every single time you catch it, he's getting some coaching by Manny Watkins right now. Like, listen here, young fella. You get the ball, you better shoot it every single time because you may not get in for the rest of the year. You know, Mike Anderson calls the timeout here. Yep, yep. There he goes. Great Good job. That's fantastic work right there. We love that. <laughs> John Holmes. Coming in for the first time in his Razorback career, Jonathan Holmes, the 5'10 freshman from Columbia, Illinois. And man, he, he, this kid he just made his career. Adriel Bailey on the drive. Jones looking for Holmes. <laughs> you got to run something for him, right? And you know, every Get time he touches open this, look. shoot, shoot. <laughs> yeah, not if it's going to get blocked back <laughs> in your face, though. 39-point lead for Arkansas. They're trying to get to the century mark here inside Bud Walton Arena. If you're Holmes, you got to even get in the book. Even if it's a missed shot, you get your net, you get your number in the book. Rebound and swatted away by Bailey. Glotta for three, not this time. 
Now here's Trey Ivory, the junior from Louisville, who's getting into the game for the first time as Austin Fee empties its bench. Spin in the lane. And a bucket for Steve Harris, the sophomore from St. Louis, playing in his first action. Might be the last time here for Holmes. Hannes. Holmes coming off the screen. Puts it up. Oh! Just off. <laughs> and that's the loudest I've heard the butt walk the crowd all night. Don't oh, you love it? He's got a huge <laughs> smile on his face, though. This hey, is fantastic. It looked good. You look at even the coaching staff. That's what you love about college basketball right there. Young fella working hard, having his opportunity to get out on the floor. And coach is loving it as well. Glott is going to put up the three. And he gets a rebound. Holmes takes it down. <laughs> They're pushing. One more chance. Oh, behind the legs. Oh, oh! missed it. <laughs> oh, that was fun. That was great at the end of the game. Arkansas <laughs> runs away with it against Austin Peay. 99 to 62. It's a feel good.